So if you've been struggling between design hands off and having inconsistent design between the actual designers and developers and turning the actual design into code and all these problems and issues created between designers and developers not having consistent design or consistent workflow. Well, using the UXP merge or the new UXP merge plus the UXP editor that will allow you to solve all these issues. So the UXP merge will allow you to use any react UI library, like for example, the end design and integrate that into the UXP editor. And yes, you can allow your designers to take the end design components or the code components and design with those. And yes, they will be able to use any code components from the end design or any other UI library, even your custom custom private library, and they can just take those components and put them in the design like a drag and drop like buttons and everything. And they all work smoothly. So we already worked with UXP in a previous video on how to take UXP and actually do or like design using code components for like pre built in code components like MUI and other libraries. But now it actually got way, way much better using the UXP merge. So the UXP merge will allow you to actually import or use any NPM package, which is particularly going to be a UI library, a react UI library, and you can take that and integrate that straight through into UXPIN using the merge components. And the merge in here is going to allow you to use whether it's actually an open source library like NDesign or any other open source React library, or you can even integrate your own UI library. So I've been actually testing and working with the UXPIN merge for a couple of weeks now, and it absolutely looks really, really amazing where you can just go ahead and like an important library straight through and you can use any component to design using the code. Or if you're a designer, you can easily take the those components and you use them throughout the design. So you can have a consistent design and you can take that and you also keep it consistent when you try to turn that design into a code. And of course, you will be able to control all the properties or the props like the react props as it would a developer do you can do it as a designer too. you can just manage all of those with ease without needing the help of an actual developer. So let's go ahead and get started with the expand and I'm going to just go ahead and start a new design in here. So I'm going to go edit a design you can go and create a new or another prototype. I'm going to start like um, a new brand new prototype in here. And of course, make sure you're logged in and you can actually access UX bin in here in order to be able to access all the features. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to like, uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to design a portfolio in here, particularly like a developer portfolio. And to actually use the merge or actually go ahead and import another component. So we're going to be changing it for now. It's clear to see like the available components. Those are like the UX bin libraries, which are available from UX bin. And this is like your libraries, the testing libraries. So for example, for why you can use a library, for example, what I'm going to use in for this particular video tutorial is the end design. So the end design here is an absolutely amazing component library. It's more of like for react, and it has a plenty, plenty of components from alerts to cars to uh, collapsibles and different stuff. And it absolutely works amazing. So I'm going to try to use this, you can use a lot of more like components libraries, open source one, like maybe the Gromit one, which has, you know, plenty, plenty of components as well, maybe the lighting design system by Salesforce, there's plenty of them you can find on GitHub anything and you can use it or otherwise if you're like having your own custom made up private company or like private UI library, well, you can go and integrate that too. Because if you put it on NPM and just like have the right access to it, you can just go ahead and do it and actually integrate into your XPIN real, real smoothly. So I'm going to go with the end design in here. And for the end design, you need to go in and access the NPM page because this is how the integration works because you need to integrate the or basically integrate the NPM package straight into that straight into that. So here what it's called is called end D. So the package just called ND in here. So this is all what you need. So let's go back to our design on the UXPIN in here. I'm going to head over to libraries in here, and I'm going to click on a new library. So once you click that you can go ahead and do a design components in UXPIN. But what we're interested on is import react components. So to import the actual library here, you head down here, and you click on new library. And this is will allow us to import any react component library, you can like no more info in here, but I'm just going to select import react components, click next, and it's going to give you this pop up with like, you know, some options that you need to enter about the library that you want to integrate. So the library name here should be like, you know, you can you can enter whatever this is a custom name. So I'm going to do like and and uh, design maybe it's true because I already got some like libraries in there as well. So I'm going to hear this is the package name. And this is very important. So you need to enter the correct 
npm package name in here, otherwise you don't get it. Uh, you can add another dependency package in here, but for InDesign, we only got a single dependency we need and that is it. You can specify a specific version, which I'm going to leave as latest by default. And there's an assets location. And this is where you integrate or put any third party like CSS that in this one needs to be integrated. Now, how do you know that? Of course, this is specific to your library if you have a private or anything. But for InDesign, of course, it has its own here. So if you go and head over to scroll down a little bit, you go to import. And this is the CSS. This is where the CSS lives. So I'm going to copy the path into this. And I'm going to go back in here, I'm going to go and like just paste it, you can have an NPM RC, like a specific configuration, we don't care about that. And of course, you can have like who can access this maybe a team, of course, you want to have this for your entire team, because this is going to be a design library. So you're going to have it all. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. And this will take us to the next step in there. So this should be able to add the component library. There you go. So we got the component library added. But of course, the library doesn't have any components yet, because we need to go ahead and add the components. And we need to specify different options for that components. So I'm going to go and click on open merge components manager. And this will allow us to actually access and manage the components that we're going to integrate into our own UX being components. All right, now let's say we want to go ahead and add the button components into the UX bin library that we just created. So the button components in here in design is pretty good button actually it has plenty of properties, plenty of stuff, you can do plenty of themes and types and everything. And what we care about much is actually the actual API. Now the API in here represents what are the available props that could be passed into the button component. So you can like, for example, pass danger as a boolean, uh, the HRF in here, if it's length, you can have plenty of stuff in here, like a type, a target size, and so much so much for so what we want to add is go ahead and back into our library and then click on add the new components. And I'm going to go ahead and type in the button. So I'm going to type in button, the package name is undesigned, of course, because you can have multiple packages in there. And you can just go and select a category or create a new category. So I'm going to create a category, I'm just going to name this, for example, a button category, click enter, and that is it. Now this once you click on that, it's going to go ahead and import the actual button. So before you can actually use or start using the button, you need to go ahead and do like the published library changes. So you explain would know what are the components and you could actually go ahead and import it from the actual component library. All right, so now once everything is actually imported, you can go ahead and click refresh library, and that will just do a hard refresh. So we can get all the components that we have just added, and you can actually go ahead and start using them. Now as you see the library is ready to use, I'm going to click on the button in here. And this will go ahead and bring us everything that we need. And of course, you can go in and manage the button in here however we want. So for example, the button first is actually we need to add properties or what are called props. Of course, they are just simple react props. And that's what it is. Now for props in here, if you head over back into the actual API documentation, I'm going to see plenty of stuff. Now the first thing I want to add is actually children because that will add the actual button text in here and whatever. So I'm going to go in and do children and go and like do children again in here for display name. And this is the property name. So this is the most important one because this is this should match the same property name on the components, otherwise, they're going to fail for you. This will be like what's what you need to display on UX bin. And here, of course, you can provide any description, um, texts, like, for example, text of the button or whatever. And of course, you can add this description for designers or for like, you know, helping them knowing exactly what this prop is for, so they can change it accordingly. So in here, I got the prop type in here, you can add whatever I can go in and add um, a string, of course. And this should be like an import or text field or code editor just an input for this one. And you can add it like, you know, for example, button text. So as soon as they add as you see on the preview tab in here, you can go in and see the button, which is pretty amazing that you can preview what you got. And this is actually the button we're going to be able to use inside of our designs. Wow, awesome. All right, so I'm going to go and click on add property, maybe you want to add another property in here. So I'm going to add like danger, and danger again. So just add danger, for example, I'm going to go into choose Boolean. If you do true, it's going to be like turn into Jane danger, whatever, add property, uh, maybe you want to add the type as well. So type, 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 and this should be a string. So that could be anything really for the type. Um, so I want to like, for example, I want the primary, you know, button type, and that should just change it immediately, which is pretty awesome as well. Or let's say maybe you want to add loading in here. So I want to have some little spinner that's going to spin up on, on all the designs. So I'm going to have loading. And those are all like booleans, most of most of the stuff. And it's pretty simple to work with the end design. That's why I absolutely love it. So as you see, when I toggle this, as you say, get the loading in here, which is really amazing that you can just see that in action. Uh, you can have all of those or maybe you want to add like the size, 
So the size of the button in here, which is a string. And of course, you have to match that the same types in here, or sorry, the types right over here, uh, in order to get that working properly. And of course, throughout this interface, you can manage the different properties, you can hide, you can remove, you can change whatever you want. And once you're done, you can just go and head over to save changes. And after that, you can just click on publish library changes. And this will just take a couple of seconds to publish the new library. So publishing means just going to go ahead and put the library for the entire team to have this new changes. So you can actually start using this inside of your own designs. So now if we jump back to our design and actually refresh because we need to refresh for the library library or the new library to take effects in here and have all the new components. And there you go. Now we got our single components added in here. And of course, make sure you're selecting your new library that you just added. So we got the button here. Once we click it, we're going to have the new button added. So as you see, this is the new button, you can have uh, children, you can have different stuff as you see now it, it starts with loading because I, I chose that on the components. So you can disable you can do like danger, you can change this to like defaults. As you see, it's pretty, pretty easy. And it's pretty interactive. So as soon as you click, you're going to have the effects immediately on the design in here. And maybe I like when I do the this like maybe if I want to do like large for the size, it changes immediately. It's absolutely amazing. You can do all of those and this will help the designers actually design using the actual code components that's going to be building the entire application at the end, which is mind blowing. So I got another library in here, which I was already working on and has like a couple of components here added from the end design in here. Like for example, the calendar, the common image, typography, plenty of stuff. And actually, I already added all of those. So I'm going to use this library to actually design my portfolio in here like real quickly. So I already chose the library and design and D in here. And I already got a couple of stuff in here. So for example, let's say I want to add some button on top. Uh, and that button would be, um, let's say I'm, I'm going to just like have this button to be like, I'm going to center this. I like like you can drag and drop the components in here. Those are code components from InDesign. And you can actually go ahead and drag and drop them in here and you can edit the props real quickly and you can have the changes real quickly. You can preview the changes or view the prototype real quickly. It's amazing. So for example, I'm going to like move this to danger because I want to change the theme in here to a like a little bit, you know, like reddish kind of theme. Uh, maybe you want to have this primary as well default shape, I'm going to change like contact me, uh, maybe an exclamation mark, uh, you can do load in. Yes, pretty cool go stain or whatever. But I'm gonna keep it this way. It looks it looks pretty decent for me. Uh, it looks pretty Yeah, pretty well made up with some, you know, bonus home services and plenty of stuff. Yes, it looks amazing. So I already worked on some designs in here just to make the video quicker in here for you guys. So I just like, you know, copy some SVGs, you can do all those sort of stuff like you can imagine Figma, but you can have like you in here, you can do all sort of stuff that you can do everywhere. So let's say I want to add for example, so let's say I'm going to just go ahead and like drag and, and go ahead and clone this. Uh, maybe just change this to people we works with. So like, uh, like that. So I'm just going to have this down a bit in here, center it. So here, I'm just going to have some comments from, you know, the library that we just created the end design components that we have already added in here, uh, which is the the comments, I'm going to go and click. So this is this is what it looks like for a comment, which is pretty amazing, though, uh, you can go in and do all of those. So you can just go in and edit like all of those. So I already added all the props throughout the components in here or the throughout the components manager interface in here that I can go in and access through in here just you know, as a designer I can access all of those props and it can change them in real time to see the new design. So for example, you can do like uh, here, like really nice guy or something. Uh, so just, you know, just a quick feedback, then that should change. Uh, maybe when I change in here to like some, you know, some like image in here that should be changed as well. Uh, I'm using some APIs in here for the amateurs and everything. Uh, like maybe you want to change three hours for the you know, like whatever in here, you can even remove it altogether. And you can change you know, the username in here, like, um, I don't know, like John or something, whatever. So this should this should look pretty amazing. It's crazy. They are very, very customizable real easily. And of course, you can go and click and clone that you can do a sort of stuff. And for example, we can have another section where we can have a calendar. So it's crazy. just clicking on that we got the calendar from the end design. And you can like change it whether it's full screen or not full screen by default. And of course, we manage all of those throughout the components manager again. So this is the final design, everything was put together using UXP and we integrated using the UXP merge with like the end design 
npm you got everything is interactive because you know the library integration and the live react components that you've already put so you can have like buttons and of course after the actual design is done you can just you know of course the developers will be able to do is go to like to the spec for example in here like selected components and they can get exactly what they need to put on the react in here and they can have full consistency between the design that are being put by designers and the actual final products so thank you guys for watching i really hope you guys enjoyed so now you can go ahead and give a shot to the exp editor and try to work with it and maybe just integrate a library and see how it works or maybe make your designers happy for a day and just like you know let them try the exp editor that would be absolutely amazing